welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in San Pedro at the Korean Friendship Bell. This bell is magnificent. The pictures I've seen simply do not do it justice. It is in this gorgeous pagoda. It is surrounded on three sides by the majestic Pacific Ocean, but it's also more than just a gorgeous piece of art. It has an amazing story to tell. Imagine you're a teacher, a history teacher, and you love teaching the history of your country to your students. Then you come into work one day and you're told you can no longer teach in your native language. You must teach in Japanese. All of the history books, they are taken away and burned, and they're replaced with Japanese-approved history. And you're told that if you try to teach your country's history and culture to your students, it's a crime. You will be arrested. This is what happened to the Koreans in the early 20th century when Japan annexed Korea. The years pass, you have a daughter and she grows into a beautiful young woman. World War II breaks out and one day your daughter is gone. No explanation, she has just disappeared. Other girls in the neighborhood have also disappeared. You go to the authorities, they do nothing. Girls across the country have disappeared and no one tells you what has happened. It's not until years later that you find out they were kidnapped by Japanese and taken to Japan and forced into prostitution as comfort women for Japanese soldiers. When the United States defeated Japan that ended World War II, we also liberated Korea. It was determined that Korea would be split at the 38th parallel. Communist North Korea, capitalist South Korea. A few years later, North Korea invaded South Korea, sparking the Korean War. And the United States led a military effort with the UN to stand with South Korea and defend their independence. We were successful. In 1975, Philip Ahn, a Korean-American actor, led a group of Korean-Americans who were living in Los Angeles to South Korea. They approached the government and suggested the government give a gift to the United States to celebrate the United States' upcoming bicentennial. The Korean government thought this was a great idea, but what what could they give? What gift would really symbolize the friendship between the two countries, would celebrate our bicentennial, and would also honor the veterans who gave their lives for South Koreans' independence? They looked back through their history and they decided to create a replica of the divine bell of King Song Duk. King Sung Duk lived in the 8th century and this bell was commissioned by his son. It was cast in 1771 and it is one of the largest bells in the world. This bell is identical in size and weight and a lot of the design is very similar but there are some differences. The divine bell is on the left and the friendship bell is on the right. You can see that the design at the top and the bottom of the bell are very similar but the details are different. On the friendship bell, you have the dedication written in English on one side and the same dedication written in Korea on the opposite side. There are four sets of two figures. One of these figures is the Goddess of Freedom, which looks like the Statue of Liberty. Next to the Goddess of Freedom is a Sunyu, the Korean equivalent of an angel. The Sunyu is holding something different in each of the four engravings on the bell. In this one, She's holding the yin-yang for harmony. Here, she's holding a dove for peace. This one is the Rose of Sharon, Korea's national flower. And this one is holding a laurel for victory. Before presenting the bell, the South Korean ambassador was looking for locations to place it. Griffith Park was actually one of the contenders, but he was also shown this location. This, was, this is now called Angel's Gate Park, but at the time, it was the location of Fort MacArthur. As soon as the South Korean ambassador heard the name MacArthur, he said, this, this is the place. This is where it needs to be. So why would the name MacArthur elicit that response? Fort MacArthur is named after Arthur MacArthur, 
He is the father of Douglas MacArthur, and Douglas MacArthur led the Pacific Allied forces that defeated the Japanese in World War II. Douglas MacArthur also led the Allied forces during the Korean War to defend South Korea against communist invasion. What better spot could there be to give a token of friendship between our two countries, a token that honors the veterans who gave their lives in the Korean War and celebrates our bicentennial. This is the perfect location. <laughs> The bell doesn't have a clapper on the inside of it. Instead, it is struck with this huge wooden clapper on the outside of the bell. You see the curved basin underneath the bell. That is to help with the acoustics when the bell is rung. There's a blow hole at the top and you'll notice the square lattice. This helps with the acoustics of the bell. When the bell is rung, you'll hear the higher tones first. The sound reverberates and oscillates within the bell, and then you'll hear the lower overtones. The bell was designed to do this acoustically and not contemporarily. It was designed to do this in the 8th century. It's designed to enlighten you and to open all of your energy centers. The bell is housed in this gorgeous pagoda called the Belfry of Friendship. It's supported by 12 columns, and each of these columns represents a different animal in the Asian zodiac. I read that the animals were engraved on the columns, but I couldn't find this anywhere. I did see these gorgeous dragons at the top. I mean, the, the design is really beautiful. Most of the design, though, is the Rose of Sharon, which is Korea's national flower. Remember I said that the divine bell of King Songduk was one of the largest bells in the world? This friendship bell is also one of the largest bells in the world because it is identical in size and weight to the divine bell of King Songduk. It is rung five times during the year on two U.S. holidays, 4th of July and New Year's Day, and on three Korean holidays, Korean Liberation Day, Constitution Day, and Korean American Day. It is also supposed to be rung on the first Saturday of every month, which is the day, and which is why I am here. I got conflicting information online about what time it was to be rung, and two of the times that I saw have come and gone, and the bell has not been rung. So I have my fingers crossed. Someone is still coming to ring it. Fingers crossed. My hopes were raised when the park ranger's truck came around. This is it. Someone is here to ring the bell and then they drove away. So I found this clip from the Korean Cultural Center where they ring the bell. Notice the high tones are first, and then you'll hear the low overtones. Last weekend was Memorial Day, and that's the day that we honor the veterans who have given their lives for our freedoms. And we usually think of this in terms of they sacrifice their lives for our freedoms, for the United States freedom, but it is so much more than that. Our American troops have given their lives for other countries' freedom. They gave their lives for South Korea's freedom. Over 40,000 American troops died for a country that wasn't theirs, for a people they didn't know, because freedom is that important. This bell, this is South Korea's way of saying thank you. We honor your country, we honor your veterans, and we honor the soldiers who gave their lives for us. I am super disappointed that they didn't ring the bell today, but this park is pretty amazing. If you come to Los Angeles, you should definitely add the Friendship Bell to your list of things to come see. If you like this video, then check out the Gottlieb Transit Corridor in Griffith Park. I hope this helps you find your adventure. Thank you for watching.